In this session, we're going to talk about those essential skills that you need to know about maintaining and potentially averting disaster in Active Directory. So if you're ready to learn, stay tuned. You might learn something. Hello everyone, how are you? I hope that you're all well. Uh, this week, I'm gonna follow up on a couple of sessions that I did previously on Active Directory, but this time, I'm specifically gonna focus on kind of maintenance and troubleshooting and things like that. So uh, again, <laughs> I'm gonna try and get as much as I possibly can into 20 to 30 minutes, so bear with me. We've got some good stuff here. So um, I've had questions on things like FISMO, flexible single master operations. I've had questions on database maintenance and just, you know, potential disaster recovery issues with Active Directory. And I thought, hey, that would make a really neat session. So stick around because I've got some deep learning to come here. So if you're trying to upskill or kind of just refresh your skills, on Active Directory, or if you're a newbie, then this is gonna be perfect for you guys, okay. Now, if this is your first visit to us, you are most welcome, but if you're not, and you're not subscribed, then please go ahead, click on that subscribe button, ring that bell, and you won't miss out on the good stuff in the future. And if you've not seen the other Active Directory videos that I've done, I did a couple actually, I did one on kind of the infrastructure and, uh, the differences between kind of physical and logical uh, components of Active Directory. That was the introductory video. And in the advanced video, I did, a, I did sessions on things like trust relationships. I've done sessions on things like sites and services and replication and so on. But this session, I really kind of wanted to focus on that kind of troubleshooting, disaster recovery type scenarios, which at some point in your careers, you will definitely come across. All right, so stay tuned. Now, also at the end of the session, stick around because your, your question uh, could be featured on this week's question time. And this week, I've got a couple of good ones for you. So I think without any more further ado, I think it's about time we jumped into, first of all, a little explanation into what the, the components are and how they work. And then I've got a demo for you. So stick around, you're gonna learn something. Enjoy. So when we talk about maintaining Active Directory, of course, what we're talking about is the fact that Active Directory is a database. And the name of the database is ntds.dit. Um, the other thing that's on here as well is something called the sysvol folder. Now, basically stored within that Active Directory domain controller, there are a number of key roles, and we call these FISMO roles, or Flexible Single Master Operations. And the problems with just having a single domain controller is if you have just one uh, and it fails, you've lost everything. Whereas if you've got multiple domain controllers, then you can disperse or move the different roles uh, to different domain controllers to avoid disaster. And we're going to talk about that just now. Let's have a quick look. Okay, so before we're able to manage uh, these various FISMO roles, we need to know where they are. Uh, and we need to know what they are. Now, essentially, there are five FISMO or Flexible Single Operations uh, Manager roles or master roles. Uh, the domain naming master is responsible for the naming of your domains. So, for example, if you create uh, subdomains, it's used in forest management and so on. The infrastructure master is exactly as it says, it maintains your entire infrastructure. Um, the RID master. So every time you create a user or create a group, that user is stamped with a unique number, a unique ID. And it's the RID master that makes this possible. 
The PDC emulator, I mentioned previously the primary domain controller, this allows backward compatibility with Windows NT domains. To be honest, this is pretty old. Um, where you would use it, um, various places actually, including uh, directory replication. So in the old versions of Windows Server, it used to replicate every five minutes. And that basically meant that if your domain controller was lost connectivity for more than five minutes, you would have discrepancies. But now that that's now about 30 minutes. The schema master basically maintains your entire schema, your complete set of directory objects, users, computers, uh, and so on. But not the actual objects, but more, think of it like um, File Explorer in Windows. So think of the uh, the structure of your data rather than the content itself. Okay, so where do we find these five roles, I hear you say? Well, I'm going to come into um, Server Manager. I'm going to come up here into Tools, and I'm going to go into Active Directory, Domains and Trusts. So the first of our um, options here, the first of our FISMO roles, uh, you can find these. Um, basically, I'm just going to come to the top here. I'm going to right click and you can see it says Operations Master. Now it says Operations Master um, and this is the Domain Naming Master because this is Active Directory Domains and Trusts. Of course, this is where you would create things like trust relationships and you would structure your forest here and so so on. Um, now, if this machine went down, then it would just mean that everything would still work. You would still be okay uh, for a short while. It would just mean that you wouldn't be able to expand your forest until it, until this role came back up. Now, of course, if you've got multiple domain controllers on premises, um, rather than keeping um, this on let's say DC1, what you would do is you would click on change and you can essentially move this role to let's say DC2 or DC3 that I had in the graphics. So it's a really good idea to disperse these roles. So that's the first of our five roles. Okay, so what about the others? Well, this time I'm gonna click on Tools. I'm gonna to go into Active Directory, Users and Computers. Again, I'm gonna click at the top here and I'm gonna right click and you can see that we have, well, a couple of options here. You can change your domain if you were working with multiple domains and you can also change domain controllers. So um, if you've got DC2, DC3, this is almost like a remote management uh, facility here. Now, if I come down to all tasks, there it says, it says operations masters. And you can see here that we've got three operations masters on this screen. We've got the RID master. That's the, uh, that's the machine that's responsible for generating security IDs. Now, if this went down, this is pretty important because this is kind of three kind of core roles here. Um, so if this went down, um, you wouldn't be able to create users uh, or manage groups and things like that. So this is pretty this is pretty serious this one. PDC emulator. So again this is this manages all the clocking and uh, various things like that. Uh, and again you've got the infrastructure master here. Okay. So that's four of our operations masters. Okay. So what about the schema master? Well, the schema master as you can see um, by default it's not visible because it's pretty darn sensitive. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna type go into a command prompt and I'm going to run this as an administrator and I'm going to just paste that in. And when I activate that, you can now see um, it's now succeeded. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna open up um, a run command. So I'm just gonna go in here, I'm gonna go into run. Um, I'm going to run an MMC. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click up here onto file. I'm going to do an add and remove snap in. And now you can see that the schema uh, master is now visible. So I'm just going to bring that across and let's have a quick look at this. So this is the active directory schema. Okay. 
And as you can see, it's a database. And a database is comprised of classes of objects. And of course, objects have attributes. Now, of course, it's really important that um, when, when I'm just going to right click here and you can see it says connect to schema operations master. And again, you've got an operations master role here. So this allows me to uh, manage uh, the schema master. Now, just one thing to note, there can be only one schema master within an organization. And it's really, really important that you maintain and manage this carefully. So again, if you did need to move this role, again, you can move that there. All right, so just a reminder that to activate that, you need to use this regsvr uh, command, uh, and that activates the schema management.dll. All right, now, on the subject of database maintenance, of course, it's really important to know where, of course, our databases are stored. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here to my Windows folder and I'm going to scroll down. And as I scroll down, you can see that we have a couple of really important folders here. Uh, one is the NTDS folder, which contains our uh, Active Directory database. And of course, the other one is the SysVol folder, which contains all our things like group policies and things like that. Now, if I go into the NTDS folder, you can see that we have a number of different elements in here. So you've got, that's the actual Active Directory database, the NTDS.dit file, but you've also got a couple of um, log files in here as well. So you've got a log file um, and you've got a checkpoint file. So the idea is that as processes are um, used in memory, um, a checkpoint is created, it creates a log file, that log file is then eventually added to the Active Directory uh, database. Now, um, for maintenance reasons, it's a really good idea to keep log files and the database separately. So when you're setting up Active Directory, and I'll actually cover this on a future video, um, we'll actually deploy it in a future video. It's a really good idea that if you've got multiple hard drives to keep the log files and copies of the Active Directory database separate. All right, it's really, really important. Now, as well as those five FISMO roles, there's also one other really important thing that I definitely want to mention. Um, that is, of course, backing up. Um, so if you need to move that Active Directory database or you need to back it up, you can back it up with most backup uh, utilities, including the Windows backup. But you can also use really good third party tools. So it's very important to take uh, regular backups. So to move the Active Directory database, you need to use a utility called NTDS Util. Now, to be honest, on this virtual machine that I'm working on, I've only got one VM and I've only got one um, uh, hard drive at the moment on here. So um, essentially, you would open a command prompt. The first thing you would do is stop Active Directory on this machine. So if this is like a second domain controller, you would stop Active Directory running on this machine. You would then run NTDS util, and then you would type in activate instance NTDS, um, and then type the files, file names, where you want them to go. Um, and then essentially it, you say, okay, I want to move the database um, enter e, where do you want to move it? I want to move it to the E drive and then press quit twice. So it's, it's really, really simple. Okay. The other thing that I want to just mention to you is some, a really important feature called the global catalog and the global catalog can actually be found. Let me just close this down. So I'm just gonna close this down and I'm not going to save that changes there. Okay, so one important thing, and a lot of people kind of forget about this. So I'm just going to go into server manager here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come into uh, sites and uh, I'm going to come into actually users and computers. And here in users and computers, I'm going to go into advanced features. 
all right? Now, if I just, you'll see that there's a number of additional hidden folders here. For example, lost and found, really, really important. Uh, I'll come back to that in a second. But you can also see that we have got a folder here or a, an organizational unit, I should say, for domain controllers. And you can imagine that if you've got a number of different domain controllers here, if you right click and if you go into properties here, one of the th the options that you now have is this NTDS settings. And you'll see that we have something called a global catalog. So um, it, in my graphic at the beginning of this presentation, I had three domain controllers. So you can imagine that in a very large organization, um, global catalogs generate a lot of network traffic. So you might want to have, for example, like a bridgehead server to be a global catalog rather than every single server. Um, that can be quite good. Um, global catalog uh, tends to speed up queries. Um, so it's, um, it's, it's a pretty useful uh, feature. Um, so we've talked about the FISMO rules. We talked about just backing up where Active Directory is, troubleshooting and things like that. What about another couple of practical things? Um, often, and I'm sure you've seen the videos on my uh, YouTube channel on hybrid. I've done a number of videos on hybrid. Um, if you are running Azure AD Connect, which let's face it, the chances are you are, there are just a few things that you definitely need to know about in terms of security. Clean up before you join Active Directory to Azure using um, Azure AD Connect, make sure that you clean up any old stale user accounts. Um, because of course, any old accounts, anything like that, if hackers manage to get into your system, they could then essentially use these old accounts. Also minimize the use of local and domain admins. You really want to keep this down to a minimal amount, okay? Um, use group managed service accounts. So group managed service accounts are awesome because they have very limited privileges. And definitely in a hybrid scenario, enable multi-factor authentication. This will increase your security a million times over. And then very importantly, and we've been talking about backups here, if you have on-premises data, make sure that you take regular immutable backups. That means um, it doesn't, the data doesn't change, it's read only. And make sure that you store them separate or off-site or completely disconnected from Active Directory. What we're starting to see is a real trend in, in ransomware attacking not just Active Directory, but also Active Directory backups as well. And that makes it even crueler. It makes it an even crueler attack. So definitely make sure that you have immutable backups. Okay, so the final thing that I want to just mention is, uh, I'm gonna come back into Server Manager I'm going to click into tools and I'm going to go into the Active Directory Admin Center here. So in here, um, what we're going to do is I'm just going to expand this out. And I have mentioned this before in a number of my videos, but again, in this case, it's really quite important. Um, I mentioned the lost and found folder um, previously. And of course, the idea of that is if items get deleted, um, you can go and you can restore items from a recycle bin, which is great. But the key thing to note is the recycle bin is not on by default. Um, so this was added in an earlier version of Active Directory. So again, one of the things you want to do is you want to come in here and you definitely want to switch on this recycle bin. now. As always, this is a re irreversible feature. So once you switch it on, uh, you cannot uh, turn it back off again. So I'm gonna click OK and there we go. Now on the subject of previous versions of Windows Server and so on, um, I'm just gonna flip over here and I'm gonna come into Active Directory Users and Computers. And there's just one thing that we need to mention. If I go up to Active Directory, 
Um, obviously, you've got your different domain controllers. You can switch to your different domain controllers and so on. But if I come to the actual uh, domain itself, you can see that we have something called the domain functional level. And this is really important. So at the moment, I'm running as, as high as I can go because of the server that I'm using. Um, but if you were using an older version, let's say Windows Server 2003 or Windows Server 2008 R2 or something like that, it's really important that you keep your schema up to date, all right? Um, and what this does is it raises the functional level of Active Directory with all the latest features for your database. So again, it's you're basically upgrading your database. Now in the past, typically this was an irreversible option. So if let's say this said 2008, I could then upgrade. There would be an option here to upgrade that if I wanted to. And this was traditionally an irreversible action. Although you can now do that with PowerShell. Um, you, can, you can lower it back down with PowerShell if you really must. But it's really not recommended. So if you've got multiple domain controllers, um, for example, here. So if I go in here and let's say I had multiple domain controllers, multiple you know, DCs, what you might want to do is you want to raise your domain controllers in your entire domain before uh, upgrading the forest functional level. All right. So for the forest functional level, I'm going to go into Active Directory Domains and Trusts. And in here, I'm going to right click and you can see this is where we would go in and raise the forest functional level. So you would need to raise all your DCs in your in the same domain. Once you've done that, you would then raise the forest to be the same level. OK, so it's it wouldn't be good to have different levels. You would definitely have um, problems with that. All right, so that's just a good tip, forest functionality in Active Directory. So there you have it. Isn't that cool, eh? Now, if you enjoyed it, please go ahead, bump that like button. It really does make a difference to the channel. Now, if you've submitted a question, let's find out if it, your question is featured on this week's Question Time. Okay, so the first of our two questions comes today from Sajid, and he says, thanks for sharing great information. Uh, uh, he's talking about the retention versus deletion video that I did a, a little while ago, so thanks for watching that. Um, he's asking, what date is considered a dis for disposition review uh, to retain the documents? For example, if you've configured the labels uh, for a trigger when the document gets modified. Okay. So basically, uh, let's say, for example, I, it's, let's say it's the 1st of August 2022 and you set this to retain <clears throat> to the 1st of August in 2023. Um, if you make changes to that document on the 1st of September, it will be retained to the 1st of September 2023. And then what will happen after that, it will then go into a recycle bin. Now, if you've got disposition review switched on, it will then alert you or anybody that you've notified. All right. And that's how it works. OK, the second video. Uh, sorry, the second question says, um, how many days are documents stored in preservation hold libraries forever? OK, actually, that's not true. Um, by default, it's forever, but you can actually set um, a time on that. So as I said in that video, Microsoft only do one of two things with your data. They either archive it or they delete it. That's it. That's the only two things. So I hope that helped. 
Okay, so for the second of my two questions, uh, I actually had this question on LinkedIn. So thanks very much for uh, uh, for that. This is, comes from Henry Evans, and he said, I just wanted to reach out to you uh, about your experience as a Microsoft MVP and as an MCT. I currently work with an IT service desk position, and I have a long-time career goal of becoming a Microsoft MCT and an MVP. Um, I'm undertaking Microsoft Fundamentals certifications and focusing on expanding the knowledge of different Microsoft products and services uh, through my job and in my spare time. As a current MVP in your position, what would what advice would I give? Well, you know, Henry, I actually did a couple of videos that you definitely want to check out. Um, the MCT and MVP videos that I did, but just a short answer is uh, once you've passed a primary certification, so you've got, for example, um, Security Associate MS500, or you become a expert qualification. That means you've done the MS100, MS101, and, and various certifications like that. You can then do a train the trainer course. And there's a number of places that, that, that do this. Learning Tree do a, a train the trainer course. And CompTIA also do a CTT plus, a Certified Technical Trainer Certification. Once you've got that, then you can apply to become a Microsoft Certified Trainer. And it's actually interesting that in COVID times, um, it, it's normally, uh, there's a fee chargeable, but in COVID times, we've actually had a, a free run on it. So that's that's been really good. So now is actually a really good time. Uh, I actually do think as well that there is actually a shortage of good Microsoft trainers. So definitely build up your knowledge for that. Now, as far as the MVP thing goes, uh, if again, if you've got a, a channel, maybe on YouTube, maybe you write books, maybe you speak at conferences, maybe you're um, involved in a support group or something like that, then again, it's all about getting noticed by Microsoft. And you can get noticed either by another MVP or a Microsoft uh, employee. And the thing about the MVP, it's an award. Um, it's not a certification, Henry. All right. But I hope this really helps you. All right. And the best of luck with both of those uh, aspirations. So that's it for this week. Thank you so much. If you've not subscribed, hit that subscribe button, ring the bell. And of course, as always, if you've got comments, questions about this or any of my other sessions, please just get them down below and I will do my best. And who knows, maybe it's your question that's going to be featured on next week's question time. All right. Right. You take care and uh, I will see you next week. Stay safe. Bye. Hey, thanks so much for dropping by today. Here's a couple of videos that you may enjoy. And while you're here, go ahead, click on the subscribe button and you won't miss out.